Hello guys, so it is Zoe's 10th anniversary and they sent me a sample of their ZTR01 as you can see here and this is a 96 by 96 thermal thermography multimeter so yeah I want to go through a bit of a demo of the thermal functions so yeah I did make a couple of shorts on this multimeter but I didn't actually I don't think I got a chance to, to actually demonstrate it properly so on some more distant objects and mid-range objects so yeah I'll go through that in this video and just some of the different functions of the thermal camera and uh, yeah just also go through a few bit of an overview of some other features like the general multimeter features so yeah let's go ahead and get started so yeah basically you can see here it's pretty much everything that you get in the box so you get this little case you get an instruction manual and you also have a USB-C cable so this thing connects onto the back here so if you take photos with it which you yeah you can save the thermal images can transfer them to your computer can also update the firmware and it's also just used for general charging so i'm not sure what kind of battery it has in there i think it might be a couple of 14 500 cells and those are the leads so yeah i only really use this for thermography so i have the older version here the ztr01 which is 32 by 32 pixels but i yeah mainly use the the multimeter function on this one it's pretty much the same in terms of uh, all the other multimeter functions uh, the only difference really is the high resolution so 90 96 by 96 and you can see just on the older version here of the r01 you've still got that flashlight uh, it's like a little flashlight there but uh, there is a visible light camera as well as the thermal a thermal camera there and yeah, funny enough, the, the lens of the thermal camera of the, the newer model, the high spec model, is a lot smaller. So it doesn't have the visible light camera anymore. It doesn't need to rely on that because it's got a higher resolution. But yeah, let's go through uh, some of the general functions. So basically, you just press and hold this button here and the thing will turn on. Now, it takes a little bit longer, I noticed, to turn on than the ZTR01. So, yeah, the ZTR01 takes a little bit, you know, it doesn't take as long to turn on. And, yeah, you can see, like, side by side, um, yeah, the resolution is a lot better. Um, let me get it here. Yeah, it's a lot better on the new model, the ZTR02. Um, yeah, and, and the frame rate as well, it's 25 hertz on the ZTR02, so you get really decent yeah decent like smooth feedback and uh, that's like my little display monitor screen thingo that people ask about all the time and you can see it's just really like night and day so yeah of course the r01 is a lot cheaper so if you want to if you want the best value option that's probably the one to get but yeah i really suggest if you've got the extra cash on hand to get the r02 it's just yeah the thermal imaging is much better and if we bring it up closer i'll just show you uh yeah just a few of the functions so this button here if you press it you can actually increase the brightness of the screen okay and i wouldn't say that it makes it more sensitive um but yeah i guess it just alters the image a little bit to to make those thermal objects appear a lot brighter but to a point i mean after a while it's just almost absurd um, but i tend to leave it on about the 40 to 50 there yeah, 40 to 50 percent brightness mark and that's yeah that is pretty pretty decent and yeah, you can use it on things like flashlights as well to let me just turn this one on but you can turn it on uh, Hang on, there we go. Just put on like the high mode. And you can see here it is starting to warm up. And you can actually uh, measure the different points here on the screen. So if I get really close here, um, it will actually detect the minimum and max. So the max is like, it's very hard to see, but there is a little cursor just floating around there which uh, states 32 degrees 
Celsius and the minimum is 25 degrees Celsius, which is just in the corner there. Okay, but visually you can see it's quite a sharp, crisp image and you can even like use it, see if I, because the light is actually, it produces a bit of heat as well. It's actually heating this mat and you can see the trails of the mat. But yeah, most importantly, you can see the, yeah, the heat pattern. Um, now, this is all kind of like an estimate. You need to get really accurate temperature measurements. You need to go into the settings and set the emissivity values. So basically, yeah, I'll go through that in a moment, but emissivity values and also the distance. So yeah, if you set those two values, then you get much more accurate readings, but this is still okay. And that's another color palette here. So if you press this button here, you can change the color palette. I've just changed that to rainbow. You've got this one. It's like a red heat. That's a merge. Ooh, smell something funny going on. I think it's... Oh, you know what it was doing? Jesus. Look at that. The flashlight was so hot that it's like burnt the edge of this box. Like from here, the, the light that was coming out from my, from my P80. Jeez, that is, that's nuts. That's never happened before from that range. Must be coated with some type of plastic. Um, yeah, look at that on the, <laughs> on the imaging. That's showing as like 60, yeah, 65 degrees Celsius. So it must have been hotter when it melted. Okay, that was kind of unplanned. So yeah, you can, you know, swap through. That's uh, white heat. So anything hot will show up as like white black heat and uh, yeah you can go all the way back to the normal modes here so you can change a few settings here in the menu if you just hit that button so over here you've got album so I can select album and that was the image that we took earlier and uh, we can go down uh, oops let's go back one again and so the display I've put onto 100% um, auto off you can set and so this is where I'm what I'm talking about so the distance and emissivity so you need to measure the exact distance from the object and enter that in here and also the emissivity value so you see there's like a few different examples here you can choose from I wonder if you if it actually if I click onto it here does it actually scroll further down are there additional yeah, there are some additional bits and pieces in here that you can select, like presets. But yeah, it's good that you can set a custom emissivity value. So there are going to be some types of materials like anodized aluminium, black anodized aluminium, that might have like a custom value that you can put in there. So I think that actually might be around 98, 0.98. So yeah, to get that's basically to get the most accurate measurement, I do suggest that. And what else do we have here? Oh, yeah. So in the image, you can select a few of these different details as well. So you can increase the details, contrast, and brightness. And uh, that's what I've set mine to at the moment. Okay, 80, 50, 80, 80. And it's funny enough, when you actually change around these values, it actually affects the image quite considerably. So, yeah, just play around and see what works best for you. And that's the color palette, uh, which I've already demonstrated. You can set the unit as well. And those sort of tracking, tracking uh, dots that that run around on the screen to show you the highest and lowest point. Now I haven't activated this one yet, the curve. Let me turn that one on and and see how that looks. I think it might just have a another toggle on the screen on the display screen. We'll see later. So yeah, you can set two different types of uh, temperature measurements. So a high temperature or a low temperature measurement mode. So normally I'm measuring stuff. Uh, from this range. So I think that's for most people. I'll set it to that. We can set to automatic. It will, it will just toggle. And uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, we've got this USB switch so you can turn the USB mode on and off if you're transferring files to your computer. Also, there is a uh, file storage formatting option as well. And you can change the language and the two options, English and Chinese. This is cool as well. So if you want to set an alarm, so basically if you're measuring something and you want to see when it reaches a certain temperature, you can enable that. So I believe it'll make a little beep there. So it's like a warning and then an alarm setting inside. So let's go back and see what that setting has done. Okay. Yeah. I don't really like that. You know, I think it, yeah, it, it's a, it's basically a graph um, and it graphs the, yeah, it graphs the cursor. Um, that little center um, cursor. So it might be useful. I don't know if you if you were pointing it at something and you just want to measure 
uh, see like a visual graph kind of representation that might be good but I do find it kind of gets in the way so I'm going to go in there and reset it in order to access all of the other multimeter functions you just press and hold this button here to the left and you can cycle so there is uh, your AC DC you've also got a uh, diode tester capacitor tester continuity tester in there as well so to access all the multimeter functions while you're in the device you just press and hold here i believe it actually memorizes so if i turn off and turn back on let's see it should memorize what mode you were in well either the thermal or the there we go so it's measured it's uh remembered it and yeah you can measure ac uh, dc voltage and also uh current in there there is a resistance tester continuity tester you can measure diodes and capacitance mm -hmm. as well 25,000 counts so it's pretty accurate i think the zoe zt r02 is a huge upgrade over the original r01 so yeah basically it's 96 by 96 thermal resolution you've got uh, 25 hertz feedback as well makes it actually really practical and you can use this from a distance and actually detect objects from quite far away so yeah it's, uh, it's upscaled to 240 by 240 and i really like that you can you know change all the settings in the image processing itself so yeah i'm gonna run a bit of uh, yeah run a few more tests and yeah just so you can see how it performs in a few different environments if you have any questions just let me know okay so this is the zoe ztr02 recording a video at the moment and you can see the camera's uh pretty hot it's picking up the heat from the camera but the awesome thing is that it really identifies the different forms um, quite well and the sharpness of the image is pretty good you know considering it's a 96 by 96 sensor you know got my power plugs and stuff here on the ground um, you can even pick up footprints over here what have I got here that's yeah that shouldn't be yeah that thing shouldn't be too hot that's um that's my charger but I don't have anything connected to it and yeah let's have a look out around here um, now this is my fridge so there should be yeah, you can see the coils just running down the back of the fridge there um hadn't used haven't used my microwave yet so let's just have a look inside my freezer so yeah what i like is that you, you can really see the yeah, you can really see the form of all the objects, which you weren't really able to tell with the original ZT uh, R01 model. And this is my um, meter box. You can see the mirror here with me in it. All right, and this is just looking down the street, and again, pretty decent pretty decent little performance like I'm surprised that you can make out all the bits and pieces of the buildings um, on the ground here as well there are some people kind of walking in the distance let me try to change the color palette see if we can pick any of them up yeah, it's a little bit difficult there are a bunch of people kind of walking around underneath in there but uh, yeah, difficult, quite difficult to spot at the moment. Um, but at night, surprisingly, I can pick up those little blobs of detail. So this is a little circuit board I have here on the table. And surprisingly, the detail is quite good up close. So if you're using this thing for macro work, you can actually identify little like individual components in here to the point where yeah I just wasn't I wasn't expecting it to be able to actually focus in that far okay and we're going to change the color modes as well I know some people use this this mode here uh, identified like hotter components like that view of this side just some of the components 
sitting inside. And back here again to the this other mode. Rainbow mode. Wow. Yeah, I'm genuinely impressed and surprised. Uh, you know, for long range and mid range, or well not um, long range, but I guess mid range use, it was still able to get some very clear photos. And um, but, um, to be able to get this close to stuff as well, it might be useful for some of you guys out there that work on electronics and you just want to be quick and easy. Um, quick and easy solution here. I mean, it's not the clearest, but um, I think it's I think it's pretty impressive for what it is.